Thank you very much for inviting me to talk about surface antigen loss, a predictor of long-term clinical outcomes. These are my conflicts of interest. The question is, does surface antigen seroclearance better predict better clinical outcomes for end-stage liver disease, hepatocellular carcinoma, and survival? by natural history, after nuke therapy, interferon therapy, and then what about, what about newer drugs? So this is a very early study looking at a 15-year prospective follow-up of over 20,000 male civil servants in Taiwan. And Palmer Beasley in this landmark study looked at development of hepatocellular carcinoma by the status of the individuals at enrollment. There were 3,400 surface antigen positive individuals, 17, over 17,000 individuals who'd lost surface antigen and had antibody to surface and core, and 1,200 without any markers. And when he looked at the development of cancer, you can see there were 204 cancers in the surface antigen positive, 18 in those who'd lost surface antigen with an incidence per 100,000 of 394 in those who were surface antigen positive, six in those who'd lost surface antigen and none in those who didn't have hepatitis B. So it was really an amazing study showing that loss of surface antigen decreased the development of hepatocellular carcinoma. Fast forward, a number of decades, and you're all aware of the REVEAL study showing that HCC and cirrhosis increase with increasing amounts of HBV DNA. And Liu took a portion of those subjects who had complete surface antigen data, who did not have hepatitis C or cirrhosis, and had at least two HBV DNA levels. And that led to 2,900 patients out of the re total reveal cohort of 4,155. None of these patients had cancer at time zero, and they prospectively followed for 15 years, depending on their HBV marker on the left here. So those who had undetectable HBV DNA at enrollment or follow-up, and then subsequent surface antigen loss, were 516. Those who were undetectable at entry or follow-up but didn't lose surface antigen, 635. Then those who were E antigen negative at enrollment but persisted with HBV DNA were the largest group, 1351. 151 had E antigen positive at enrollment, lost E antigen but remained HBV DNA positive, and the last group, those who were persistently E antigen positive. And you can see the number of cancers they found here in the third column, and the number per 10 to the fifth patient years increased from 94 in those who lost surface antigen up to 1226 in those who were persistently E antigen positive. And their multivariate hazard ratio adjusted for age, sex, smoking, alcohol, history of diabetes, ALT, and genotype were increasing with increasing from no surface antigen to positive surface antigen with DNA to E antigen to higher viral loads. And the lifetime risks are shown on the right. All were statistically significantly different from those who lost surface antigen, except for the first two. And they then did a sub-analysis of 748 patients who had baseline surface antigen levels with undetectable HBV DNA. And compared to those whose baseline quantitative surface was less than 1,000, those over 1,000 had over a twofold risk of developing cancer, showing that not just loss of surface antigen, but even low surface antigen in the face of undetectable HBV DNA decreased the risk of cancer. 
suggesting perhaps integrated DNA being the cause. What about survival? This is Fadovich's stud, retrospective study of 309 patients followed for, fi for 5.7 years. And you can see that 16 of 196 treat, untreated patients lost surface antigen compared to eight of 82 interferon treated. And the graph shows the survival probability and compared to those who cleared surface antigen, those with persistent surface antigen had much lower survival and 20% of them died of end stage liver disease or cancer. And of those who lost surface antigen, only one patient died of hepatocellular carcinoma. What about loss of surface antigen on nukes, both survival and HCC? This is over 5,000 chronic hep B patients treated with lamivudine or entecavir for at least five years, six years, and 110 achieved surface antigen clearance, which is a pretty low rate. Eight of them zero reverted, but then seven re-lost surface antigen, and I'll come back to that later in the talk, two thirds developed antibody to surface. And they propensity matched the 110 with 372 patients who didn't lose surface antigen. So compared to those who lost surface antigen in blue on the left, those who didn't have zero clearance had a lower overall transplant free survival. And on the right had a higher uh, cumulative incidence of hepatocellular carcinoma even though you can see that those who lost surface antigen had a small incidence of cancer, as we've talked about before. So nuke induced loss of surface antigen improves survival and decreases the risk of cancer. This is a study from Choi this year, looking at was there a difference between spontaneous and nuke induced seroclearance? So time zero is the confirmed zero clearance. They had 1,624 who'd spontaneously cleared and 348 who, had, who were nuke induced. And 15% of the whole cohort had cirrhosis. And they were propensity score matched for age, sex, cirrhosis, various liver tests, creatinine, alpha feta protein, history of diabetes, and Fib4. And you can see on the left, the cumulative probability of HCC didn't differ between the nuke induced in orange and the spontaneous in green. And on the right, the cumulative probability of a clinical event was not significant either. Finally, Anderson and Choi did a systematic review and meta-analysis for the HBV forum including 188,000 patients with chronic hepatitis B, both treated and untreated, of whom 33,000 cleared surface. There were 28 studies, 18 Asian, 10 prospective, 16 treated, with nearly 1.5 million person years of follow-up. They report, 26 studies reported on HCC, seven on liver decompensation, 13 liver transplantation and death. The composite event rates for the zero clearance was 0.19 and over tenfold more for those who had persistent surface antigen. When they an analyzed by liver decompensation, hepatocellular carcinoma, liver transplant or death, or first clinical event, you can see that each was decreased from a relative risk of one, which is in, shown by the red arrow, all would decrease markedly and significantly if the patient zero cleared. And this was true whether the study was retrospective, prospective, whether patients were treated or untreated, whether they were Caucasian or Asian, a small number were co-infected with hepatitis C, hepatitis D, or HIV, and that didn't differ, and by E antigen status. They looked at interferon and nukes, and they also had a decrease with 
uh, those patients who lost surface antigen had decreased risk of first clinical event by loss of surface antigen. So zero clearance improves long-term outcomes, liver decompensation, hepatocellular carcinoma and survival. I remind you that even after surface antigen loss, HCC is higher in those who were cirrhotic at the time of loss in males and in older patients. And the zero clearance has been shown to be improved long-term outcomes, both by natural history and interferon and nuke in treated patients. It's not yet known for DAAs and other immunotherapies. I bring up this old study to remind us that surface antigen loss may occur long after treatment cessation. This is a study from the NIH of 64 interferon-treated patients, of whom 36% lost the antigen. They were followed for three to seven years. Two thirds of them lost surface antigen over the first year to six years. And you can see the DNA hybridization became negative early, followed by E antigen, followed by normal ALT, followed by HPV DNA by PCR, and finally by surface antigen. But these patients lost surface antigen up to six years after cessation of interferon therapy. So is surface antigen loss durable and do we need to know antibody to surface? So let me go back to the Choi paper, the 17, 1972 patients, and they found antibody to surface from one to 15 years increased from 37 to 92%. In their study, nuke treated were more likely to make antibody to surface, but HCC in incidence was no different whether antibody to surface appeared or not. They had 39 zero reversions. So that means 98% of patients had durable loss of surface. And zero reversions were lower in those who spontaneously lost than those who were nuke treated. But of the 39, 35 of them re-lost surface antigen without any intervention. Last year, there were two studies, one from Anna Locke, looking at three large randomized controlled studies in which 55 patients lost surface antigen, 82% were durable, Eight of the 10 sero reverted within the first 24 weeks post therapy. And whether the patient had sero conversion or not didn't make a wasn't statistically significant with durability. The second was from Alawad of 65 patients with 90% durability, three patients sero reverted, but two subsequently lost surface antigen. An antibody to surface was higher in the interferon treated group. So in summary, surface antigen loss improves outcomes, end stage liver disease, hepatocellular carcinoma and survival. Current therapies have a low incidence of surface loss. Zero clearance may occur after end of treatment early or late. It's usually very durable and it's not clear really if spontaneous nuke or interferon induced zero reversions differ. Antibody to surface may occur more often with interferon than nuke or spontaneous clearance. It's not protective against HCC development, and it's not clear from studies whether it's protected against zero reversion. Finally, zero reversion to surface antigen positive may be transient, so follow up is required. In conclusion, Excellent, uh, surface antigen loss is an excellent predictor of long-term outcome. Will surface antigen loss on DAA therapy predict durable loss is a question that needs to be answered. It may depend on the mechanism of action of the DAA. Off therapy for at least 24 to 48 week minimum is required to look for delayed responses, may require long-term follow-up studies. I remind you the timing of loss may differ between antivirals and immunotherapies and between mechanisms of action and half-life such as SIRNA. 
So follow-up is required for durability, for efficacy, but what is so exciting is to have studies that induce surface antigen loss. Thank you.